Oh dear. Oh dear. Season three, episode six. Well, you did it. All right. Well, hello and welcome to episode 38 of Oh Dear, presented by Bose Bar and Stage, coming to you from Communal Creative Studios in the heart of downtown Red Deer. Uh, This episode is sponsored by our good friends at Red Stag Barbershop, who you've heard us talk about a whole bunch already. And now you'll get to hear the full story behind the business as owner Clayton Willington uh, will join us a little later on in the show. And a very special hello to anyone watching us for the very first time on Roger's TV. Uh, That's right. We've dominated the audio universe and the internet. And by dominate, I mean kind of sort of scrape together a very modest following. But now it's time for us to conquer the world of public access television. Uh, So thank you to Rogers TV for uh, giving us this opportunity. I hope we don't blow it. Fuck yeah. (laughs) I start writing down where I have to bleep out swears. (laughs) Okay, that's my only one. That was the only one. I I promise. I promise. (laughs) Uh, I'm Ted Emmett, joined in studio by almost everyone this time. Uh, We're down two people tonight, so yeah, not quite a full house, but it does mean we have a full table instead. Uh, No one has been banished to the couch, which is too bad. Riley has a really nice new uh, couch set up here where you can actually see everyone. But uh, great news for the athlete, Kevin Strybosch. Two episodes in a row at the table. Congratulations. (laughs) Hey, man, I do the sound effects. (laughs) (laughs) And welcome. How's it going? Oh, uh, I didn't know that was <laughs> my intro. Kind of your cue to, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, no, it's going great. I, like you said, two episodes up at the table. I feel like a big boy now. <laughs> and you are. Uh, that also means some confusion, though, as two Kevins at the table for the first time tonight. Luckily, we don't really call either of you by your actual names anyways. But Kevin Walsh, welcome back. Yeah, thanks, Teddy. I'm uh, happy to be here. Tax season's over. Uh, I can see the sunlight again. And uh, I'm just glad that a famous person stole one of your jokes and that joke was about me. So indirectly, yeah. I feel about a uh, Kevin, honored. nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I don't know about stole. We, we stole it from the same place because I stole mine, to be honest. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryan Lund, I don't write intros for you anymore. I'd rather just let you kind of flap your yap and see where it goes. So uh, have at her. Thanks, Teddy. Uh, I've been wanting to get some stuff off my chest for a while. Um, and this is the only thing I want on my chest for the next seven five weeks <laughs> depending on when you guys see this but uh go oilers all the time uh let's bring the cup home i'm glad you did specify that it's an oilers jersey oilers jersey that he's wearing for for everyone listening we still do the audio podcast too oh my this thing gets we're so not confusing. just on tv am yeah. i am i playing up to the camera or am i playing to the mic exactly oh yeah you all got right. it. Yeah. <laughs> You're always playing to the camera. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, right here in the middle, attempting to keep this podcast from falling apart at the seams or uh, being the worst contributor to that actually happening. Coworker Aaron, uh, you were here last episode, but welcome back anyways. Thanks for having me. Aaron, can I say you look <laughs> stunning tonight? <laughs> uh, thank you. I got my earrings off AliExpress. So. Wow. Is your hair growing back? It is actually. Oh, wow. Yes. You'll hear about it in the interview, <laughs> but I will say postpartum hair regrowth is really coming in. So three to five years from now, this hair is going to be stunning. Nice. Stay tuned. I'm sure this podcast will still be going by then and we can have an update. (laughs) Not a chance. (laughs) A uh, big shout out, as always, to Riley for having us here at Communal Creative Studios uh, for our TV audience, uh, if we even have one. Uh, who knows if anyone actually wants to watch this junk. But uh, Riley's the guy behind the scenes making all of this magic happen for us. Uh, you'll rarely see him on camera, but you'll almost certainly hear him uh, fucking around pretty much every episode in the background, <laughs> making a whole lot of noise while we record. So uh, you can look forward to that just so that you know he's here. Uh, Andrew Russell couldn't be here again. His absence streak stretches to two episodes and a big three in a row for Mr. Dustin Moore, uh, which we expected. He actually, uh, you know what, didn't uh, drag me along as as long as he usually does. He gave me a full day's notice that he wasn't coming. Uh, What I didn't expect to say, though, with 100% sincerity, uh, hopefully we can have him back next episode. Oh, that's a sad state of affairs. Teddy, this is really cool that this is with Rogers because just last week I had someone knock on my door and offered me a sweet deal and so we just moved all our tv over so i'm looking forward to watching us 
Yeah, I mean, they're already like we're, you're selling it to people who obviously are oh, yeah. Rogers, but yeah, I'm trying to sell to him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't have Rogers. Yeah, we don't have. We can't. I, I know where you can watch the podcast, but uh, no, I'm I am excited about this. You know what? I owe a lot to uh, a public access TV and Rogers uh, before when it was Shaw going through school and at the beginning of my career, I did a ridiculous amount of like volunteer stuff. I even got paid to do some like baseball commentary on there with with Peter Lubardius. That was pretty cool. But I mean, who else can say that? they've done play by play for snooker Ooh. not a lot of people huh. and guess what it was it was real fucking bad <laughs> like i've done it i've done it but just not in front of anybody oh, or, yeah, or just, for anybody yeah, but, okay yeah, yeah like the players are bad or you were bad oh i was terrible oh, okay. no it was a great tournament <laughs> the players were just trash <laughs> <laughs> anyways now that we got our usual start of the episode uh, mumbo jumbo out of the way it's time to move into the glad game hopefully you can read that after i spilled on it Aaron. The Glad Game is brought to you by Rock On Records. Saks Thrift Ave has a new look, new location, and a new name. Visit Rock On Records at their new location for Central Alberta's largest selection of vinyl and band merchandise. Find them at 4828 53rd Street. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram for all the latest deals. Uh, for the Glad Game today, again, I'm I'm very lucky at least to, to always have these stories kind of in front of me every morning. But uh, we're getting towards the end of the school year. I know especially like Kevin, with you having kids, you probably appreciate teachers more than ever before. But uh, four different teachers in central Alberta uh, getting some recognition in Clearview Public Schools, uh, the Clearview Star Awards. Uh, these are both kind of cool. Uh, Jenna Shepard, uh, the Clearview Public Schools Transportation Coordinator, is getting a Clearview Star Award. She actually started 10 years ago as a bus driver for Clearview Schools and uh, now is, uh, yeah, their transportation coordinator, uh, getting some recognition there. And uh, Darren, I, I don't know how to say your last name and I apologize if I butcher this, but Darren Fleischaker, uh, he has a sweet nickname though. Uh, he's been vice principal at WME uh, Hay Stetler Se Secondary Campus, my goodness, uh, for quite a while. Uh, he's known as Mr. Fly, which is, I wish I could steal that nickname, uh, but they say he's transformed the the lives of students and is loved for his innovative teaching methods and deep commitment to student welfare. Uh, then Chinook's Edge School Division, they hand out uh, the Roy E. Cope Awards. This is two uh, educators retiring in June. Uh, Associate Superintendent Ray Hoppins, who's been there for 30 years. Uh, and then Didsbury High School Band Teacher. I like this one, Kirk Wasmer. They said half the students at uh, Didsbury High School are enrolled in band, uh, which is a direct testament to Kirk. I, uh, you know, I did high school i did junior high band and stuff but i feel like it's a very underfunded underappreciated uh, discipline that i wish i stuck with too but uh yeah i just want to give a shout out i know we're gonna have more teacher recognition coming at the end of the year but there was just uh four that was out there in the world hey great job great job teachers you got mentioned on the Oh Dear podcast. Now you've you, made it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to speak a little out of turn here, but the Teachers Awards uh, just reminded me that last week was Nurses Appreciation Week. So I just wanted to throw that in. Why? Um, <laughs> I, I live with a nurse, so <laughs> she would be really happy that I mention it. And because I live with a nurse, I hear a lot of the stories about everything that goes on at the Red Deer Hospital. And I know for me hearing firsthand, uh, it makes me really appreciate the kind of care that we can get here in central Alberta and just Alberta in general uh, and the hard work that they put in and just like how much they care. So I just wanted to give Nurses Appreciation Week a shout out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, I thought you guys were dating. I didn't know you just lived together. Yeah, she's my landlord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you don't want to date your landlord. It can get weird. <laughs> <laughs> You could do worse. Oh, that's why you spurned your advances over these years. <laughs> All right. That was a good, that's not out of turn though. No, there's always, always room for more in the glad game. Another one in the books. So now time to get to our feature interview. As I said, off the top of the show, Red Stag Barbershop is our episode 38 sponsor. They've been a partner of ours now for a couple of months. Been a great partnership so far. Uh, we've done lots with them, gotten a lot out of it. Uh, but we, what we haven't done yet is really pull back the curtain and reveal the story behind Red Stag, uh, how they They've come to be a staple here in central Alberta. So with that, here is our interview with the owner of Red Stag, Clayton Willington. 
All right. Well, very happy to be joined with a new friend of ours, someone we've already worked with a lot in the last couple of months. Uh, Clayton Willington, the owner of Red Stag Barbershop. Uh, thanks for being here and thanks for supporting us. Yeah, no problem. It's great. So uh, I guess first off, uh, tell a little bit about your story. I know you've, uh, I think you're from Red Deer, moved away, came back. So uh, kind of tell us how you got uh, from where you were to where you are now. Uh, born and raised in Lacombe, Alberta. Went to university in Calgary. Met my wife. We were living in Sylvan Lake and I was looking at real estate after the oil went crazy and houses were like $400,000 and houses out east were like 100000 So we moved out to Moncton, New Brunswick. We stayed there, had seven kids, moved back um, in 2015. We moved there in like 2006-ish, moved back 2015. I uh, was working from home for an IT company doing contracts for like Marvel and everything like that. Wow. And then I cussed out the executive VP and like found, Stan or <laughs> <laughs> I found myself like one of his nephews. Yeah, yeah. killed Stan Lee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, and found myself unemployed with a large severance package and decided to start a barbershop. And Red Stag is really unique. Like we learned when we first met you that it, it is local to Red Deer to Central Alberta, but it's also a, a franchise, which I, I don't know if there's too many of those just here in Central Alberta. No. Uh, yeah. So we started franchising because we believe in promoting from within. So the, in the business plan is written because in, in the culture of barbershops, like you train somebody, they grow up and they want to open their own shop. With that, there's a constant turnover of people and talent and loss of revenue. So to keep that revenue in-house and to help people grow and expand, we built it in that we would basically finance our barbers to open their own red stags with their own flavor. That's why when you go into one, they're all different. There's no like template. It's not like a like Tommy guns, like we don't knock them, we love them, but they're all like that typical franchise. Like you walk in and you know it's a Tommy guns or like McDonald's, they're all built a certain way on a template. A red stag isn't that way. People can add their own flavor. So that's how we ended up franchising. The very first people that wanted to open their own shop, it was kind of almost like the Chick-fil-A method where we would build it and then they would, through sweat equity, earn their share of it, like pay it back. They didn't want that. They just wanted to own it outright. So talking with lawyers and everything, we went with the franchising model. Wow. Hmm. And so now, and you just actually opened up a, a new store as well, like what, a week ago, two weeks ago? Yeah, we announced it two weeks ago. Uh, I've been looking at that piece of real estate for months. Um, it almost got torn down. It was a historic property, downtown Lacombe, and the guy was just sitting out front having a beer. My cousin walked by and was like, what are you doing with this place? He's like, I don't know. And he was like, my cousin's looking for a piece of property in town here. And I connected with him. He showed it to me. It was down to the studs. Like there's so much work that needed to be done to it. And I'm hoping we'll get it open here in the next two weeks or so. We generally open around May 22nd. That's when they've all opened. So I'd like to stay with that tradition, but we'll see how things go. So uh, can, we, can we back up? I'm sure Aaron has the same question as I as I do, but did you say you have seven kids? No. <laughs> or, do, or are you just exaggerating? No. For effect? No, I'm not exaggerating. Here, I'll name them. <laughs> from, from youngest to oldest. We have Pearl, who's five. We have Abigail, who's seven. We have Silas, who's... Oh my God, I'm a horrible father. <laughs> He's 10. We have Ezekiel, who's 11. We have David, who's 13. We have Providence, who's 15. And Hannah, who is 17. Wow. wow. That's, that's that's impressive that you... Yeah. <laughs> I, I see. I was thinking you had four. And even then, I'm like, when we're scheduled, I'm like, well, I know he's going to get home to four kids. He's probably busy, but seven. I, uh, my goodness. Yeah. Are they all going to start like eventually working at the barbershop too? Like every um, like, TGIF oh, show? They are scene? expanding. Yeah. So they need, yeah. they, need, yeah. need, they need new people to run the new franchises. Uh, my 13-year-old, he's on the spectrum and he comes in and he literally starts telling people what to do. And then <laughs> when we leave, I'm like, you can't talk to people that way. And he's like, dad, but we're VIPs. Aww. We get to do what we want here. And I'm like, no. No, that's not that's not how this works. I so. like, yeah, I like his I like attitude. That. I like his attitude, though. Yeah. 
And so let's talk a bit about Red Stag and the vibe because it, it is very unique too. And uh, when we were when we first met you too, is it something you wanted to kind of recapture? Is that a kind of barber shop, the old, the more old timey barber shop feel, where it's more than just going and getting a haircut and leaving? It's it's kind of like a hangout, right? Uh, specifically, urban barber shops. Because when we lived out east, we moved to Halifax, and I had a men's grooming company. I was build uh, making grooming products and everything, and I started working in a black barbershop in Lower Sackville. And the thing at the time, I guess you, like white barbershops weren't a thing. They were, but it was just like your old white dude in his jacket doing military haircuts and nobody... Like a guy named Floyd, right? Yeah, There's they didn't want to go. Comes yeah. To mind, yeah. You were never like, ah, I'm going there. So, but black barbershops have been a pillar in their community. It's never stopped. And you go in there and everybody's got a nickname. They all used to call me Beard Man and I <laughs> talked to this guy. His name was like Crouton and T-Bone and all these kind of... And they're just like, what's up, Beard Man? And like, I'm the whitest guy on the planet, like finger pistol. <laughs> yeah. And they, they all thought it was awesome. Yeah. But what I noticed about it is fathers brought sons and they would hang out there and guys were just coming because that's where they got the news. That's where they got, hey, you hear so-and-so? Or it's like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> so it was just like a place to hang out. It was part of the community. The chairs faced out. Everybody joined in on the conversation. You could have a drink and a good time. And that's what I loved about it. It was the sense of community that was in the shop versus when I go to other shops and you sit there facing the mirror and nobody talks to you. And that's what I love about a red stag. If you come down to the capstone location you might be facing the mirror but if you're a vet's cutting your hair well they all talk shit to me if i walk by they're all making fun of me talking shit but they'll <laughs> they'll talk shit to anybody like if you do something like the girls are just hard <laughs> like they'll just c come at you it's fun so do you have the same nickname down there or do you have a new nickname no i don't really have a nickname well i think i think it's time we bring up bring back oh, yeah, yeah 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 Beard man yeah Beard oh, man. i'm saying crouton because that would be crew <laughs> funny <laughs> crouton yeah, yeah. So it's funny you mentioned, you know, us, well, Yvette specifically, but the girls there, because uh, Kevin Walsh is there right now getting a haircut. That's why oh, he's not he? the interview. <laughs> so he texted me and he said, you're supposed to ask Clayton about an Ikea incident. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If we could talk about that and how he's scared of all the girls there. <laughs> Well, so I think we've already covered number two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm not scared of the girls. It's just you're day, smart enough not to get on their bad side. Yeah. Day by day, like I know these women. Like I've worked with them for a long time, and like we're not just coworkers. I'm not just their employer. Like we're friends, mm -hmm. and we actually genuinely like we just hired this new guy Sam from Morocco, and he was pretty quiet. And after a week there, I said, "How do you like?" He's like, "I can tell you all love each other." It was like awesome. Yeah. So I just pick my battles because it's re <laughs> it's it's relentless. Like if you say something, they just all jump on you, and it's like you'll never hear the end of it. Yeah, Sam. Uh, Sam was the one that gave me my last trim when I was yeah. there. So yeah, he's a good dude, and yeah, smart to hire another guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some, hire Steve some needed a buddy. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's overwhelming. Yeah. So um, the IKEA incident. All right. So <laughs> yeah, start from the beginning. Yeah. This is, uh, this is, it's embarrassing, but it's also awesome and a great story. So we're in Ikea. I maybe ate a lot of Mexican earlier that day. I'm with all my friends, like my kids and we're just, Ikea is a maze and mm -hmm. we're walking and I'm pushing the cart and I sneezed and I shit myself <laughs> so bad. Oh, it was going oh. Like it wasn't even like a, th it wasn't even a thing. It wasn't just like, oh, maybe that was a little wet. Like I had the cart and my 15 year old knew immediately because I apparently the look on my face then you do the walk of shame you're walking like a toddler with, oh, and you're just like no. I gotta find a bathroom and it's amazing there so you're trying to find like the shortcuts to get oh. to places and she was like dad did you just shit yourself I'm like yes and then <laughs> there's no way to like explain to people in the bathroom when you're in the bathroom and you're sitting there with your drawers in your hand trying to clean yourself up oh. and then you just Kobe your gantry in the trash <laughs> yeah. and then and then you just walk out it's not a good feeling my i texted my wife i was just like i shit my pants yeah. and she was like this isn't good like you're only yeah. 43 She's like, and is this a metaphor for something no the, no i literally shit my, my future is i'm gonna have to look after you and then my 
seven-year-old daughter, Abigail, she's loud and she says anything to anybody. She doesn't even care. Oh, no. <laughs> and then I get out. We're going through Ikea and Providence goes like, I'm sorry, you crapped your pants, dad. And then through the whole store, Abigail just yells, dad crapped his pants in Ikea. <laughs> And then Pearl, my five-year-old, goes, Dad, you're going to have to bring a change of clothes in the van like me. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, this is my life now. That's a- so... That's the Ikea story. You asked for it, you got it. I thought when they said you have to tell it, it had something to like relay back to the barbershop. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Not just nope. an embarrassing story that they wanted you to tell, but that actually does kind of uh, lend itself a little bit to the fact that, you know, you're you obviously have told that story at the yeah. shop and that's, what, that's yeah. what you get when you go there. Like there's, you know, we started doing the barbershop talk series and that's the point when you're in the barber's chair, it's like no holds barred. You talk about whatever. Yeah. I love just being a fly on the wall there. Even today, I uh, went and got my what's now a traditional uh recording day beard trim i just love sitting there and listening to, to everyone talk and that's that's the obviously the vibe you were going for yeah where everybody you just hang out and you're kind of just like doing life and everybody has fun stories and everything but like i'm the one who gets in trouble the most there because <laughs> and i've had to have conversations where i'm like guys like you can't be talking this way like there's kids in here and then i'm the one that comes out and i just had a conversation with all the staff about that and then we had this one client in there and he's always up for a good time. He was talking about winning the lottery and he was like, I don't know what I do. And I was like, you know what you do? Just a mountain of coke and like <laughs> loads of <laughs> like, what do you do when you win the lottery? And this one barber was like, shut up about that. And I was like, about what? Don't tell me what to do. And she was like, about that. And I'm like, the <laughs> or the <laughs> And then she spun this little kid around in oh, her no. chair and was like, oh, you no. need to shut your mouth right now. And I was like, yep. And I just left. <laughs> and I just left right after I just had a conversation with them about like, you guys got to read the room and know what to say. And I'm always the one putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> I love that. Now we have two stories that at first, I wasn't sure if I'm going to keep them in, but they both kind of have lessons at the end. It's like an episode of Bluey. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. Don't hold your sneezes in after Mexican food. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I think I think you were kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. There. It's true. If at least you had room for meatballs after, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Usually that happens after you eat at Ikea, not before. <laughs> yeah, when I heard there was an Ikea story, I just assumed it was about struggling to put together their furniture. No, no. <laughs> no, that's way better. It was just yeah, a way better. Story <laughs> yeah. they wanted. I love that too, that they said, hey, get Clayton to tell it and you did and that's uh yeah that's what i love about red stag and the other thing too is i know you just recently moved to capstone you did have a really cool setup uh well basically down the street from us here before but that's the other thing too is like you're obviously a collector and uh just how the walls are covered with cool stuff too and that's Mm -hmm. obviously something again i i said in one of our barbershop talks that like meticulous nature of uh, taking the time to collect everything i think kind of reflects you and what the shop is all about yeah well i love the culture and the history of barbering in general i love the future of it and yeah i collect everything Uh, the storage room is full and storage locker is full like opening Lacombe, I've already got the chairs. I've got all the stations. Like everything's already just in a storage locker. So it's just like paint and flooring and put everything in. What about all that? All the the vintage memorabilia that you have on the walls. Like is is that all stuff that you've collected, or do you encourage staff to to keep an eye out for cool things too? Uh, they do keep an eye out. Like uh, I have a uh, lots of DMs from like marketplace people mm-hmm. and even clients. Okay. Like guests come in and they bring stuff and they trade. There's a couple guys that come in like i love velvet paintings Mm -hmm. and so guys they find a velvet painting and they bring it in they're like what do you want to trade for this and i'm like let's go upstairs so and then they find stuff and there's stuff that i just don't have room for anymore and they pick through it and yeah we trade a lot of the stuff i have is actually from the east coast okay Mm -hmm. yeah do you do you find a lot of the stuff uh mainly online or do you hit up a lot of garage sales or or just from from everywhere antique shops Mm -hmm. like flea markets it's, it's something like my whole family does. Like we used to go antiquing out east and all my kids collect those red rose tea figurines, the Wade mm-hmm. tea figurines. Yeah, yeah. So we go and they have lists. They have like, okay, we need the red riding hood. And they do that. <laughs> I and it. I look for like unique tins or anything related to the barbering industry or anything that would look cool. So like Jack Daniels stuff or tobacco memorabilia, like okay. stuff that looks cool on the shelf. 
themselves. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye out for you then. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I assume the price is high, but I would love to trade you for that. Just the flag that just says don't air. Assume, is that, is <laughs> yeah. that from downtown Halifax? Yeah, that's from original? Halifax. Um, actually, a buddy of mine owns a print company. I don't know. Uh, you're in radio. Maybe you know, uh, I've heard of Matt Mays. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like a buddy of mine, downtown Halifax, he does all the gig posters for Matt Mays. And, you, well, you probably see some of the Matt Mays stuff in the shop, but he printed that. He printed the Donaire one. There's a Halifax one that goes with it that I just haven't got up on the wall. Oh, I love it. So, yeah. um, I would be remiss if I didn't ask this next question. Yeah. Um, yeah. Where did the name Red Stag come from? Just red deer. Like I was sitting there because I knew I wanted to grow up beyond the city of red deer. So I was like, I need something that is red deer, but that I can take outside the city and it's cool. Mm -hmm. And I know like over in England, like the kings and queens, all the stags and the deer, no matter if it was your land or not, belonged to the king. Mm -hmm. And so like, I just thought of like a red stag. It was like the biggest trophy animal you could find. That's, so That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, and it works too. It's a great kind of Held with us, right? Having the, the deer logo as well. But I just think it must be a really cool owning a barber shop because it is, it's such a cool culture and it's not, well, it's not the oldest profession. We already talked about <laughs> what that is, but it is one of the older professions, right? It's been yeah. obviously uh, around for such a long time. And I love that it's changed a lot. And, you know, I think Red Stag embraces that, but also the traditionalism of it. And it's really, again, to see a, a barber shop full of, of women barbers isn't even something like when I was growing up. But any local barber I went to, not one woman in there, which I think is cool. And even Aaron has, has gone there too. And you said you do uh, yeah. have more women come in as well. Well, I never saw it till I came here. Like, to be honest, like out east, I knew two female barbers and I came here and the culture was Tommy guns. So mm -hmm. here to barber, you had to have a red seal. They didn't have a barber's license. So everyone was licensed hairstylists working at Tommy guns. And it wasn't what I was used to in a traditional barber shop because a traditional barber shop, when you go in, you get the hot lather or hot towel on the back of the neck and a straight razor. That's all included. So my first time here, never seeing it. Tommy guns I went in there and I was I was like what the hell is this and <laughs> I sat down got a haircut and they're like would you like a straight razor and I was like yeah and they're like that'll be 10 bucks I'm like what <laughs> so I was a little thrown off by that now I'm actually really thankful for Tommy guns because every single one of my barbers has come out of there mm -hmm. except for Sam and uh, Steve, but they are a great business as well. Like I don't want to shit talk them, but it wasn't what I was used to in a traditional barbershop and Red Deer didn't have anything like that. There was mm -hmm. definitely a hole in the marketplace. So I wanted to fill that. So is that a requirement then for staff at your places to get your barber? Uh, what, what, what's it called? Your, uh, your they had now have Alberta has a barber's license. It's one of the only provinces in Canada that does. Okay. Yeah. So everybody is like Steve is an apprentice. He's working towards it. Sam has his journeyman. Everybody does actually. I'm trying to think Gas Alley, I believe they are as well. So everybody's licensed and we only take on like one apprentice at a time. So we make sure that they're trained properly and nobody's overwhelmed. How long does it take to, to move from a apprentice to, to journeyman? Oh, yeah, he's looking for a job still. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Gio did it in about a year. Okay. So he went to school in the summer in a school in Edmonton. Then he came and started working and he did his exams right away, actually passed them. And then it was just accumulating the hours. And yeah. I think it's 1400 hours. So about a year's time. And then he was licensed. Well, I think Aaron, maybe you should talk a little bit about your, probably your first time going to a barber shop. Yeah, I'm interested to too. Get your Who'd haircut. you see? And this is someone too, uh, Clayton, you don't Who know, takes a lot of shit for her hair for no other reason than it was just a random joke that came up. But uh, but yeah, it, it is something like, like you don't think think of but it like how was the experience i guess going to a barber shop for did the you first see time? a vet i think i recommended a vet yeah, to you recommended to somebody who's going on vacation let me just see like yeah uh a vet is fantastic she worked at utopia which is one of the better hair salons in town so her scissor skills are top notch uh courtney's really good too 
Courtney has mostly only done men's hair though. Danny is really good, but there's definitely a difference between like a fully trained hairstylist and a barber. Like as being the owner Mm -hmm. and watching these people, a lot of times it's the scissor skills between a barber and a hairstylist. The barber is lacking in the scissor skills in comparison to a hairstylist because a lot of our work, men with tapers and fades, it's clippers. Mm -hmm. So I saw Sierra. Sierra. Oh yeah. Sierra too. She's fantastic yeah Yeah, she was wonderful no it was my husband's been a long time customer of red stag and then we got this partnership and i was i guess that time probably like eight months postpartum and had had just horrendous hair loss so my hair was still long but it was this just long witch's hair that was Mm. thin and tear and i just was keeping it up and i hated it But my hairdresser that I usually go to in Calgary, I'm going to her for color. Yeah. The cut is whatever. I'm going to her for the highlights and to make me uh, as blonde as I want to be. So I just, I desperately needed a haircut. And I I, I texted Ted and I was like, are women even allowed? Like, can you ask Clayton (laughs) if I can go? And so I went and it was, it was great. And actually like it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to be in there and it was quick. The price difference between getting obviously a full head of highlights and a trim, totally different. Um, so that was a delight. And my hair just felt so healthy and it was such a big difference for me, especially where I was postpartum and how I was feeling. And all of a sudden I have this light, great head of hair and it's growing back in beautifully. You can't tell now. Oh no, it's yeah, gro- we can, It's growing yeah. back it in. Looks, it looks great. Too. But it was, it was really like I absolutely would go back anytime I needed a trim and to get that like fresh feeling like it was Mm. it was great we do get a lot of women in because of that fact like Mm -hmm. we get women coming in because it's $35 $35 for a haircut yeah. and they don't need anything fancy. They just need a trim or they have a short haircut already. And mm-hmm. yeah, they just come in, get a quick cut and out the door in 30 minutes. They like it. So yeah. Aaron, I kind of, I kind of had your, your same thought process. I thought kind of growing up, but that barber shops were kind of more of like a, where men go to mm-hmm. get their cut and going to sty- a stylist was yeah. the, the ladies area. So, yeah. but now, I mean, it's 2024. So mm-hmm. That you can go anywhere. (laughs) I've been going to a stylist for years. Like I'm someone, you know, with longer hair, I'm a little more particular. And until uh, we we struck up this partnership, I was going to the same stylist. Because I hear barber shop, you just think like razor, you know, short. I I don't like myself with short hair at all. But I went, Courtney, uh, I went and she uh, convinced me to go shorter, not short. uh, But uh, I've got to go back actually. Again, these wings are starting to grow out a bit. (laughs) But it is is such a great experience because I I feel like I get everything out out of out of it barbershop wise like that feel but i still get a little bit more of the the salon thing where i'm i feel good about going in and i'm not gonna leave oh are they gonna like give me the number two razor by accident or yeah. or that like there's this the skill there too to to do uh like the salon quality haircuts oh, so absolutely. in our system there's a place for notes so the girls put notes in what you got last time and mm-hmm. they will review them and someone like courtney she just has a great memory and she's a great conversationalist so she'll you sit in her chair she'll remember and she can see her like you wouldn't believe the attention to detail like they can see there's old scissor work in your hair like how it grew out and they'll yeah. be like oh look at this this girl perfect and then they can determine what you had last time by how your hair grew out wow. and how long it's been since your last appointment hmm. it's crazy it's definitely like it's an art yeah for sure talk a little bit too because you have talked about this the staff you have and again going back to when uh dust in london i first met you like you're you uh definitely try to hire a certain type of person too yeah right? we like, like a little a bit more, of crazy a lot, yeah <laughs> a lot more about the, the character though too and like uh, yeah. steven's a really cool example you know we had him on barbershop talk heard his story but someone who's really turned his life around and he was the one who did my beard trim today and just honest just seems to love his job so much yeah we i like a little bit of crazy when sometimes because of that like my days are like insane <laughs> but um <laughs> yeah like everybody is they're out there like and we'll leave it at that it's, <laughs> it's a it's a it's 
it's a fun group of people. And, and again, obviously, you know, you guys must have so many stories just of your own and at the barbershop. One thing I'm wondering, because today as I was kind of sitting there and you get the hot shave and stuff, you know, and there you've got the straight razor on your neck and they're kind of talking to you. And I'm so torn between like my fear of getting my jugular sliced open and my fear of being rude and not answering. But has anyone, have you seen it? You don't have to call out who did it where like, that's always my biggest fear of like sneezing or something and having a big chunk of my hair or my beard cut out. Like, does that ever happen? Um, so let's see. Sounds like yes. Yes. So <laughs> not like what you're explaining. We had an apprentice who took a guy's eyebrow off no. because he was, he was a handy talker <laughs> and this guy was kind of like leaned back and he was just like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And just <laughs> took the, <laughs> and I'm going to, I white walled a guy. Now what white walled is, is when you're trimming their ear here you like take it too high and it's just bald oh, no. behind the ear so i have t-liners is what they're called they're not just like a straight clipper the ends extend out further so you can get detailed work in with the corners and i was trimming just around his ear with the edge of it and i was talking to somebody at the same time this the old guy did nothing wrong it was all me <laughs> and i was going around the corner and then i was talking and i was like yeah blah blah whatever but I leaned in too close oh, and made no. too much contact. I left a, an inch, like a good oh, no. inch. Oh, no. And I audibly gasped. I went, oh, shit. And the, and the guy went, don't worry, son. It's only hair. Oh. <laughs> and I was just like, hey, you know the difference between a good haircut and a bad haircut? Two weeks. See yeah. you in two weeks, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's never come back. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like my worst. Now, at least if you like get, you know, get a straight razor to the jugular. That's it. You don't have to worry about anything else anymore. <laughs> like the eyebrow is the worst because you have to shave the other one off. Yeah. Going on a little bit lighter side, like have you, <laughs> have you ever like pulled a prank on somebody where you like, obviously you could do it with the ketchup packages and pretend, no. pretend to cut them. Like the dumb and dumber. Yeah. yeah. Like, no, <laughs> no. Like, yeah. I, like I've seen it where like, especially like with young kids, like, like you've seen those like the, the ear. Have you seen the ear video? Uh, maybe. I, so, <laughs> wait, uh, I don't want to say it. You go first. <laughs> so, so it was a prank. It was this barber down the States, this kid had has seen him all his life mm -hmm. and he pulled a prank on the guy one time like when he was cleaning him up he used to catch a pack oh, and yes, was like oh yes. he caught me then the barber got him back he was sitting in his chair and he got a fake ear and some fake blood <sighs> and he was like using the straight razor like around here and then he went oh and then he smashed blood on the kid and the kid was like oh, what's going on he's like i'm so sorry as the blood was running and then he yeah. took the rubber ear and dropped it onto his lap uh, and the kid just started freaking out just ah mom <laughs> <laughs> yeah that yeah, so yeah, we, have you done enough. anything like that yeah. no no <laughs> thanks for bringing us to the lighter side <laughs> yeah no we've never We've never done anything like that to... Oh, well, yet. I mean... Yeah, yet. It wins your next haircut. Yeah. I was, was going to yeah. say, when's your next beard trim? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, I guess to start to wrap up, for anyone who's never been to, to Red Stag before, maybe just take us through a little bit of what the experience is because you do get to go kind of hang out. You have a, a, a beverage or two if you want, right? You have the, yeah, the garage they're, door they're now licensed. that it's finally getting nice yeah. out. Yeah. So, Capstone, we have the garage door. We throw that open. In the summertime, we set the table out there and play a little beer pong. You come in. Most of it's you book online in advance and you just walk in. You can pay online too so that you can just walk in walk out if you're that kind of guy. But a lot of people like to come in and shoot the shit and have a beer or just a bottle of water. There's a treat chest, which is supposed to be for the kids, but I've watched adults <laughs> like on their lunch hour, mm, walk wow. up and just like handfuls <laughs> and just eat Sour Patch Kids and everything. So we love it. Like most of my social media, like all the posts are just like, come hang out. And mm -hmm. one of the first, the first months we were open, if you go far back on the Red Stag page, there's a video. And I've kept the video on my phone too, because we were just three chairs in a little closet and I stood up on this chair because we had people outside the windows were full people sitting around all down the wall around the thing sitting on floors it was so packed in there people couldn't move and people were just hanging out and having a good time mm -hmm. and that's what I love about it is I love the community and the hangouts and the music and just shooting the shit that's that, what I love the most I mean that's how I would I've only I've only I guess I've gotten two cuts at, at Red Seg now that's how I would describe it. You get a great cut, but more importantly, you get a great experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, for anyone that hasn't checked it out, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. And if you've ever had a hot shave before, 
go to Red Stag first and, and you'll you'll never turn back. So I would say it actually is an experience that like men have missed a lot, especially when you go to the kind of cookie cutter barber shops, you're in, you're out. Thank you very much. Whereas like women traditionally, you're in the hairdresser for a long time. Because mm-hmm. even if you're just getting a trim, you're getting a style, you're there for a lot longer. If you're getting color, you're with your hairstylist for four hours. So you're spending a lot of time there and it is a bit more like hanging out. You're having a glass of wine and you've kind of brought that aspect back into barber shops, especially in central Alberta. Mm. Yeah. And it's not just about like slamming through as many haircuts as you can, because mm-hmm. I've worked in a barber shop where they were doing like 25, 30 cuts a day and it was like 10, 15 minutes mm-hmm. in and out. Yeah. You book in generally for a half an hour minimum and we make sure you get your time. Mm-hmm. So you get your time. I'm in the chair, hang out, talk. If you want to be quick, you don't want to talk, it'll go faster. Yeah. But it's important that you have an experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And too, and uh, Red Stag too, you do some other stuff. I know uh, Dustin Walsh and I have to get our nose hairs waxed, but you do kind of yeah. those services too, right? Nose waxing, ear waxing. Like my wife just pointed out, I've got the old man hairs mm-hmm. growing on my ears. So you got to get those trimmed up. So there's two kind of waxes. There's hard wax, which you don't need the strips for. They just put it on the sticks and stick it up your nose or in your ears and yank out the hairs. The soft wax, which you're probably more familiar with, is like you smash it on and then you use the strip and rip it off. And we use that for like eyebrows, some cheeks, like for shaping, Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And then how's, I I don't know if anyone's ever done this, but I feel like women too kind of miss out on the hot shave experience. Has anyone ever come in just to do like the process without just sitting there with the hot towels on your face and then the cold like it's very nice no but (laughs) Aaron you could be the first I would I was gonna say actually because you do a lot of like we have those little razors and women will shave their faces a lot trying to get the peach fuzz off I know that I get my face shaved 100%. Oh, yeah. And all that peach fuzz off. I've seen that in spas yeah, and it's, it's pretty much a hot shave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that is honestly like the best experience to just sit back, especially if you're not a big fan of small talk at the <laughs> barbershop. So you can't really talk anyways. But uh, yeah, lots of services there. And you said you mentioned social media, like Instagram is the best way to find you and find the link to, to go book. Yeah. Perfect. Um, that's yeah. our time. Yeah, that's perfect timing. So Clayton, <laughs> we could probably, we could sit here and tell stories. Maybe we'll have like, oh dear, after dark, you could tell a few more stories because surprisingly, I'm guessing those were some of your PG stories today. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for, for coming down here. I'm sure even an hour away from your, oh, the, what is it? 19 kids. Uh, it's, it's seven kids is, is a lot. So we really appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate you guys as a partner too. So uh, thank you so much for your support. And Oh, uh, yeah, you're going to be seeing a lot of us anyways, but uh, we'll see you awesome. soon. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Clayton. Yeah. Oh, wait. Before we go, because we talked about decor, and this is either going to end up on your wall or in your garbage. We haven't done this in a while, but I found one of these, Clayton, that I think uh, maybe, I don't know uh, if anyone wants this above their well, mirror, but it is an official Oh Dear Firefighter calendar uh, photo that we still have a lot of these because we just cannot sell them. But uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, This is amazing. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. All right. Well, thank you again to Clayton uh, for that interview. Like I said, uh, lots of stories there. Great guy. We're very fortunate to meet him and partner with uh, Red Stag. And uh, again, yeah, exciting to see them open up in Lacombe. One thing I was surprised, I didn't actually know this, uh, that Stephen, who is our, our first guest on Barbershop Talk, actually will be going and basically running uh, the Lacombe shop. So, Kevin, you got to go a little bit further now to get your fade. Yeah, I, honestly, worth it, though. I, I'll i run there. I'll walk there. I'll bike there. <laughs> Man, I'll see you. Drive. Soon, Steven. <laughs> <laughs> just drive back. Wow. This, he, he's the ideas guy. Yeah. He gets it. Yeah. But uh, no, again, uh, Red Say, it's a very cool business. You know, Walsh, you just came from getting your hair cut again. It looks sharp. Uh, but So you missed the missed the interview, but you can even attest to the experience there. Yeah, this is my third time being there. Um, it's great for me. Our office is already in Capstone. So it was literally a two minute drive over. And every time I'm in there, it's just great conversation, easy going. Uh, and they always do a great job, as you can see. So yeah, nice haircut. Thank you. That's what I was waiting for. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, since we're already doing it, let's officially head into our next segment, Shooting the Breeze. Bang, bang. <laughs> very subdued that this was, time. That was very, like, delicate. I was captivated. Yeah, well, it's not that windy out today. <laughs> yeah. uh, for our rider, for our 
TV viewer. Uh, hi, Dustin. Uh, <laughs> Lund is our sound effects guy. Yeah, we can't afford real sound effects, so <laughs> I'm him. <laughs> we can afford it. <laughs> uh, so let's stay on the subject of Red Stag because uh, now our second episode of Barbershop Talk is uh, out there. We had the mayor of Penhold, Mike Yarjo, uh, the athlete, and Lund, you were there for that too. Uh, I've met, met him quite a few times before, so I knew it was going to be a great interview. And I don't know if this makes sense, but my favorite thing about Mike is that he's like, he's almost trying to take the politics out of politics in a certain way right like he's he goes he does his job but he's not trying to like i guess sensationalize anything or anything like that he just takes his job seriously and he's about the people i well i think that's smart i mean nowadays politics in provincial and federal politics is so annoying and so so divisive. overdone so divisive mm-hmm. so and, and usually for your local politicians you would just want to make sure that they're getting the job done that they're listening to your concerns and doing the right thing for the community it doesn't matter who they support or what they believe in as long as they're doing the right thing for the community that's most important so kudos for him for <laughs> keeping politics out of politics <laughs> Um, but yeah, really, really good guy. Yeah, really thoughtful and um, yeah, just uh, overall good dude. I would think that it would be almost more pressure to be like a small town mayor just because I don't know. I just feel like there'd be like a more closeness to yeah, it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I commend him for, you know, taking on that role. And and like you say, it's kind of taking a different view of things. And I think that's what we need everywhere. And hopefully maybe that uh, type of politician can maybe emerge from some of this mess that's out there right now. Well, I think there's something too uh, when you're a small town, small community mayor too. He's a very approachable person. He's uh, younger too than what you would maybe more commonly see for a mayor. And yeah, he's just, he's out at every event. You can see him out having fun. You know, like you can uh, see uh, see in here in the episode, he has, a, you know, the Mayor Mike's uh, world's shortest marathon that he does every year. That really is just just for the people. So yeah, it was a, a great interview. Again, uh, working on our next guest. If you know anyone too, uh, that might be a great guest on Barbershop Talk. Maybe it's you. Uh, just slide into our DMs. But if you haven't watched it yet, it is on our YouTube page. And uh, here's just a, a quick clip from the interview. Uh, on the lighter side, what's the biggest perk that you've experienced? And do you actually have a key to the city? We, I don't have a key to the city. I do have a key fob to the back of the town office. So when you get, <laughs> when you, when you become a, a counselor, everyone gets a key, uh, a fob to the, to the town office and into council chambers, which is in, if you're ever in our town offices in the front portion of it. Uh, but as the mayor, you get a key fob to go into the back Whoa. portion as well. So, what happens back there? <laughs> not much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that that's where the management team works. Uh, I have a very small office at the town of Penhold that's back there. And there's no reason, I guess. I don't think I have access to any sensitive information back there. No. Um, but I do get a fob. Uh, the cool the coolest part is just well, we, we do have Penhold has a really cool chain of office. So if you're um it was donated by a member of our community. It is a it is a giant gold chain. Yeah, uh, wow. nice. You should have worn it tonight. <laughs> you know what? I maybe I should have. It's very heavy, so I wear I wear it to formal formal occasions. All right. Well, let's uh, move right on to, I think, the thing we all want to talk about the most. Uh, we're two weeks removed now from just moves right into the top five most fun nights I've ever had. We talked about it for so long. It happened. It was incredible. Uh, wannabe, a Spice Girls tribute at Bo's Bar and Stage. I think I'm going to start with Walsh again, too, because he missed it. The first two times we went, he's had to hear about it for like four years. Did it live up to the hype? Yeah, I wasn't really quite sure. But then as soon as they started, I mean, they they started it off with wannabe and you're just out there dancing. And I thought they put on a really good show. Like I was always entertained. Um, if I wasn't watching Dustin or Lund dance, then I was watching <laughs> the ladies on the stage. But I was dancing the whole time. Uh, I thought the crowd was great. And of course, Bose did an awesome job as they always do. So great night. And I thought they absolutely killed Lady Marmalade. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Not the, like the person. <laughs> no, they did a the great song. job covering yes, the song. Lady Marmalade. Marmalade, for yeah. all we know, is still alive and well. Yeah. And then the other one was the, uh, I should know the song, but it's that uh, Lauren Hill song. And it would have been Scary, Scary Spouse. Spice. Spice like yeah. wrapped the whole it was that was yeah. very impressive yeah. they're very talented yes yeah. scary spouse is ted's ex-wife <laughs> 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 that's why you're at the table oh yeah. that's why that's yeah <laughs> good work <laughs> aaron your thoughts <laughs> my thoughts 
So as you all know, this night, this is my Super Bowl and I have been so excited. I had babysitting lined up in my parents. They decided to go on a cruise. I had Selfish. my, yes. Didn't they know it was a Super Bowl? They, they did. <laughs> and my mother was very upset. So, but then my youngest brother was going to be in town and we thought we can make this work and he can babysit. I couldn't ask any of my friends because you're all there. Mm -hmm. And at the the last minute, the day of, it was looking very much likely like I was going to miss this entire night. And I threw out a Hail Mary and got a sitter. Some good friends of ours, they divided and conquered. Uh, one of them stayed with their children. One of them came to stay with my child. And the night absolutely did not disappoint. Um, to the DJ before mm -hmm. oh. doing God's work. That guy brought it. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Yeah. yeah. JD? Yeah, big shout out to JD from uh, Juiced Events. They came out. I We actually we ran into Dennis at a chamber event and kind of worked out that because uh, I didn't, I wanted to play the music before, but I didn't want to be the DJ. I wanted to dance. And yeah, uh, JD, he brought the energy. He played unbelievable music and on it, like really got that crowd fired up like like big no. time so thank you jd my goodness he was incredible mm -hmm. and set the tone and then we got to meet the ladies mm -hmm. before they went on stage which was oh my goodness they're just as delightful as you would think they are and they put on an incredible show and i think i got to be there for three hours before my mom guilt took over mm -hmm. but it was the best three hours of the year so I grew up like a huge sporty spice, like that was my spice girl. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time watching her on the stage. She was so intense. Yeah. yeah. A fun mm -hmm. fact about her too, because uh, <laughs> London and I actually ended up at the casino at like one in the morning <laughs> with Baby Spice and Sporty Spice. That was her third show. She joined the group like a week before. Really? Just for this yeah. tour. Yeah, because I guess I, uh, the other, the original Sporty Spice wasn't available. So she <laughs> just learned everything, went out too, and like they threw in, I uh, shout out to, to Wannabe too for throwing in the song Goodbye just for me because i asked about it in the interview they don't normally do it so they had to learn an extra song boy boy did i feel my feelings on the dance floor now <laughs> i had a lot of eyes on me but no yeah three third show for wow. sporty spice there too <laughs> that was impressive i would have thought that she had been with them his, the whole time his sneeze was impressive or the, <laughs> it was a good sneeze no yeah it's, and that's that just goes to show the talent that it mm -hmm. takes to do that right so and i know dustin's not here i know he had fun yeah because he has fun at everything and he texted me when he got home at midnight and he texted <laughs> me when he woke up at 7 a.m and he texted me at 3 p.m uh that how great it was so yeah dustin had fun too how was your night I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you won 500 bucks at the casino though in like 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Can't but, remember. <laughs> um, that was, that was a really fun night. We got there nice and early to have dinner at Bose and then watch the, watch, watch Spice the World, Spice yeah. World movie, which they had on the big screen and, and the volume cranked up, which was awesome. And then, uh, JD, the, the DJ, <laughs> that's pretty cool <laughs> jd the dj uh brought it for what the, a good coincidence yeah. for the next the for like an hour hour and a half before this uh wannabe came out and when wannabe came out they have such a stage presence like obviously everyone there knows all the spice girls songs and lyrics but still they're there to watch those those five women perform and dance and sing and move and they nailed like every aspect mm. of it so it was just as good as it, if if not better than the two previous shows I've been to, and yeah, very impressive that they had some new new performers that have only been there for a few weeks, and they they killed it. So um, everyone I've, I talked to had a blast, and I think I had a good time too. But like I said, <laughs> you did, you had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I was I was a little sore the next morning from all my <laughs> yeah. dancing. Yes. My hips. Well, you were when it was they sang it's raining men, you were grabbing the the men out of the air. And then <laughs> you you yelled at Kate and I, no men. No. 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 No, no, no. no men for you. <laughs> Uh, and Strybosch, thanks for the slow dance. You know what? Tradition, yeah. <laughs> when you're feeling things, sometimes <laughs> it just has to feel right. But it's one of those nights where you go into it being like, oh, this just can't be as good as last time. And like, especially this is now the third time that three, four of us have, mm -hmm. uh, have gone. And it's been like the exact same vibes, great experience every single time. And you just go in expecting it to not be as good as it is. And then they come out and just crush oh. it 
And it's just so much fun. And they didn't have the light up scrunchies, but Kevin, I, and Alex brought mm-hmm. ours from the previous concert. So we had it covered. Yeah, Kevin's landlord, Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. But, and a show. So, Lund, remember the last time where when they were singing uh, Two Become One and they all kind of sang yeah. to you and you're like, that was awesome. Yeah. I can now say I was pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It was great. No, it looked very, I I just missed recording it. I kind of got the tail end, but you were flying high that night. I was, you know what? I don't often like a lot lot of time. That's just, that's like. That's a pun. That's a pun because all the drugs. (laughs) I don't know. No, I was just. That for TV. No, (laughs) yeah. No, I was flying high, like just my mood because it's so much fun. I make sure like I have more fun at concerts and stuff when I know all the words. So, I always make sure I know all the words. And at one point, people just like watching me sing every song like this 36 year old man knows every word even the scary spice during a song mouth me how do you know all the fucking words <laughs> I, I had i think four or five different ladies throughout the night because of course like they knew we were all dancing mm-hmm. together like they knew we were there together i had four or five different people no shit come up and be like why does your friend know all the words <laughs> yeah. so i think it was to the point where a lot of people that were like on the dance floor were watching you yeah yeah just singing along which is yeah. and you know what as usually that's why i don't dance and why i don't like lose a bit of that one i just lost myself in the moment and it it was the best uh, so again thank you to bose for letting us present that show uh it was awesome thanks to all our uh, winners to our listeners who won tickets and came and it was a, a packed house again but thank you so much to wannabe as well for you know doing the interview before a uh, meeting with us too we're very very grateful to have uh, got to know them a little bit too so i think it just goes to show the moral of the story whenever events like these come up they just go don't question it don't be like, oh um, am i too old or whatever no just go because you will have the most unbelievable night i guess on that note too because it was just announced i don't have the exact date i think it's in november now there's actually going to be a taylor swift tribute show mm-hmm. going going to bows that's presented by our friends uh, at the road the stage also recorded here at communal creative studios but uh i know first like we've done the taylor swift dance party but the the tribute show the actual Taylor Swift impersonator. Oh my goodness, I am there. And I'll know every word. No, I'll give it a shot. See if it can compare. And if you don't know any, every word or any word, you'll still have a good time. Yes. Yeah. yeah take it from this guy. Yeah. Because you can just make up words. <laughs> and you <laughs> can just watch Ted on the dance floor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. All right. Uh, moving on because we still have a bunch of other stuff to shoot the breeze about. Uh, back to, you know, the, the Red Deer District Chamber of Commerce uh, partnership we have with them. A couple of the videos we're doing. Uh, Business of the Year nominations, actually, by the time this comes out, they'll be open. Uh, so just a quick quick shout out for that but our next chamber spotlight uh we've in the works a little bit of a delay but uh zs holdings is who we're featuring uh shazma and jamil sharania who are uh great great people uh huge here uh not just in uh, central alberta but they also own a couple hotels uh in uh, around edmonton but uh great interview uh, there again with them uh yeah, they have the uh, the holiday inns uh here in uh there's one in gasoline alley they're uh, great people great business people great community people uh, so make sure you watch for that on YouTube coming out very soon. And uh, great work as always too on all these videos by Riley and Fish here at Communal Creative Studios. Speaking of a great work uh, by Communal Creative Studios, the second installment of Lund Employed is uh, now available on YouTube. It'll have been out for about two weeks now. Again, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Lundy has been hitting the pavement hard to try and find his next career. Uh, so far, hasn't gone great, uh, but it's been entertaining as heck. And as you can see, both of them made a terrible mistake in letting me go. Uh, if you own a local business and you're looking to hire, <laughs> um, you can DM us. Um, or come down to, oh dear. <laughs> um, this guy could be working for you. Could you imagine? I, uh, I have the gumption needed for any job. <laughs> I'm willing to get my hands dirty for the most part. And I won't say no. Oh my. Oh. Speaking of uh, Lund Employed, though, episode two uh, coming out now and uh, it's on YouTube. For a couple of weeks now, we can officially say that episode one was no fluke. A Lund Employed actually is a hit. A Walsh, you invited your dear friend Ryan Lund to come to MNP, uh, try his hand at accounting and some cup and a couple other things. Uh, in the heart of tax season, no less, I, I, I don't know. What were you thinking? 
<laughs> Content, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it kind of, um, I think we had, you guys had filmed the first one and, and I think afterwards me and Lenny were having a beer and he was telling me about it and it kind of just popped in my head like, hey, it'd be cool to do this, especially during tax season because um, I think at MMP we're a unique firm and we're not like other accounting firms and so we kind of wanted to show our personality even in a busy time of year. So yeah, that's kind of how it came about and I thought it went great. I think that there's a lot of other footage that we could have shown just yeah. of like, it, I think it was near the start of the video where he takes out like his plant and his book and like every single room we went into, he did that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then every single room he was like, so is this my office? <laughs> um, so the, yeah, there was just a lot of funny parts. I mean, I think we went like three hours straight yeah. and we were running around everywhere. God and bless Riley and Fish. My goodness. Yeah, yeah, they did a great job. I'm curious what else was said in the locked room with our uh, IT guy. <laughs> Um, I feel like that could be like a sub episode too, right? Like just some bonus footage that we can maybe pull out, Riley, of just like all the IT stuff. Maybe that's maybe one day we'll we'll do that because it yeah. is there, it's a lot. Like I'll tell you, we almost should sell tickets to come watch it be filmed because you can only fit so much into 15, 20 minutes, and it is it is the best experience of all time being a fly on the wall. Well, and the funny part was he is like an IT guy that goes out and helps clients, and uh, I had only met him like the week before when he agreed to do this and so that day i meant to go see him earlier in the day and be like here's a heads up here's what we are right and I, he was never at his desk so i was like i just walked up with lundy and i was like here you go and then they got locked in a room and now whenever i see the guy in the hallway he's like averting his gaze from me and I, so i'm like i don't know if it went well yeah i had no idea you didn't know him at all like, i thought you was, i thought you had known him for years and i thought he knew what he was getting into and so i just kind of went along i didn't explain anything to him so I like I made an ass of myself for <laughs> 10 to 15 minutes in a room with him alone and uh, we started talking about computers and then got sidetracked with hacking and like a whole bunch of other stuff <laughs> and yeah no it was, it was it was pretty fun pretty cool to to do one of those and actually meet 10 to 20 different uh, of your co-workers mm -hmm. uh, everyone kind of knew what what the gist was but it was cool just to have have those people be part of it in some small way and i think that's kind of one of the one of the main benefits one of the main points of doing a series like this is to get more people involved and and just show like hey wh what it's like working for for this company or what it's like working for that company so yeah too bad too bad you guys didn't hire me but i'm oh, gonna yeah. keep trucking <laughs> i got something out of it you left that fake plant in the foosball room so i got it gifted to me so but yeah, you got a bunch you go. of cows already. i was gonna say how yeah. many cows did you take home i think i have like 12 nice. in a, nice. another cut scene he was playing he had the he wrote down their names and he had the whole <laughs> name too but uh kevin I, um i'll take the blame for not saying this in the episode but i think something that's important to point out and I, we've all known this all along but mnp like is a big is it national national yeah. or yeah. national but it's still it's like a very local business mm -hmm. to the things that like mnp is basically add everything supports everything so yeah was it wasn't on lund employed that's my bad for not throwing it in there but to at least say it here like yeah i i do love that about mnp is they seem to be involved and support just about everything agreed well you better yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that, that one is available now. At the end of the month, we're going to have uh, episode three. Lund, you've done two episodes now with people that you know pretty well. This one uh, actually became uh, Ricardo from Pampa Brazilian Steakhouse reached out uh, to the chamber and wanted to, to work with us uh, one way or another. And we ended up setting up a Lund employed. Really nice guy, uh, originally from, from Brazil and uh, soft-spoken. So I thought this is going to be great matching these two up. So don't don't tease too much coming up, but I... I I will say in this one too, like it was almost a little bit less funny, but it was the most endearing thing I've ever seen because you took such an interest in stabbing all that meat. It was uh, very, very educational for me, um, just because I've never, I've never uh, <laughs> obviously worked at a Brazilian steakhouse before. Um, but I also didn't want to <laughs> waste all that meat. That's a lot of money nowadays, too. Yeah. So I didn't want to like drop it or 
or have them, like have to have them throw it out or anything. So now the stakes were high. Yeah, and yeah, I know Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Good thing you didn't beef it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Pump the brakes. I, I say both those jokes in the episode too. Yeah. So you watched both. Yeah. So yeah, I know Ricardo was awesome. He kind of had a few uh, some really good ideas for us to do there too. Just when we explained to him what we were trying to do, um, and then we brought our our own kind of flair to it. So hopefully it turns out well. And yeah, I'm excited to to see see how that one is is received and uh, excited to to try my hand at something up. Well, I don't want to give anything away, but spoiler alert. Yeah. If you're looking, if you want to be on episode four, <laughs> it might be available. Yeah. yeah, if it's available, I'm looking. No, it's yeah, no, it's available. We need a business for episode four. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's all three of them have been a blast so far, and uh, the hosts have been uh, very, very accommodating, mm-hmm. and it's been uh, it, it tr- truthfully has I have learned a bit at each at each mm-hmm. uh, different business, so it has been educational for me too. Yeah, very grateful for the chamber, uh, for Riley and Fish, uh, and and for you, Lund, too, uh, Walsh for being part of it, the businesses that have been a part of it, because that's something like the long form content we haven't really done yet uh, and is really fun to do. So last thing on that, I just I want to kind of get uh, uh, some uh, two people who haven't been there for a recording. Um, you guys get to be like the critics of London Employed. What do we think so far? I love it. Like, I think <laughs> it's hilarious. And like you said, I only get to see the 15 minute snippet, but I also get to hear like kind of some of the backstory just from Ted because um, he loves to gossip. So oh, yeah. It's good gossip. We kind of get like a little peek at kind of the back end of it, but watching on YouTube when it gets released is just scheduled appointment every single time it comes out because it's just, it's so funny and you just, you have no idea what you're going to get out of this video. Like whether, we whether no, we have no idea. What's exactly. Gonna like whether you're go, you could, you're going to an accounting firm or a mechanic shop, like you could get anything out of either of those Yeah, spots. I did have someone ask me if it was scripted and it, <laughs> no. I can promise you it is That's not a compliment at though. all. Because like the things yeah. you come up with, a lot of the jokes I say on here, I do write down beforehand. You just wing it. It's amazing. Yeah, well, yeah. when you're in the fast paced uh, industry <laughs> of finding a job, you have to be on your toes. <laughs> so... <laughs> I did get a lot of comments uh, on the MMP one about when you were stuck in the uh, staircase. Oh my god! And, and like the the music and oh, the yeah. build up. And, yeah, Riley yeah. did a great job yeah. editing that. That was that was pretty funny. Yeah, I watched them with my daughter because she likes to see her weird uncles. Mm. So she thinks Uncle they're Bob hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Would yeah. Mac? Would Mac? Happen, she like two thumbs up. Nice. You get a wave. She's, she's doing thumbs she, up no, now. No, she just waves. Oh, okay. So you get a wave. Nice. nice. Yeah, which is bye bye Lund's future <laughs> career. Yeah. <laughs> and I was super interested in MMPs. Uh, Mm-hmm. agricultural department so Ooh, there you go yeah I, I learned actually i learned something about that yeah too. and who would have thought the best like the best part though of that was just watching you try to remove a couple staples <laughs> <laughs> it's trickier than it looks actually it's truly not <laughs> okay aaron well we'll take this offline but yeah, yeah. we can i will have a staple <laughs> off with you Anywhere, anytime. Okay, well, I've got experience now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He takes them from the back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, moving on. <laughs> All right, and uh, before we move on to Deer Call, have a a couple of shout outs to give. First off, uh, it's finally here. Huge thank you to Red Heart. Uh, Pretty cool that we have our own custom beer to drink uh, during every episode. It is the uh, Red Heart Blonde, but of course, uh, our cans say, oh, beer. Uh, Thanks to Jared, everyone that uh, made it happen. Lund, we went to go pick it up. It was was a lot of beer. That's, uh, I think we got 20 or 24 flats or something. So, um, yeah, hit up Teddy if you'd like a a flat or a four pack. Pack. Well, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> this has to last us till December, but it is a, uh, this is, oh. yeah, we'll see. Uh, we might have to order, we will have to order more, but uh, it's a cool thing that Red Heart does. I think you, like you can, if you order enough, you can kind of get your own custom label done. Uh, this O beer is not for sale, so you can't find it anywhere. Like Lund said, if you want a couple, I'm sure we can, uh, we can hook you up, but we're, we're trying to, to work out a deal maybe with Red Heart that uh, we do a whole bunch more and they actually sell it. So if it's something you'd be interested in buying, uh, slide into our DMs or what did you say? Come on down to Deer. Yeah. And have a beer. But uh, one quick mention for Red Heart too, because uh, they wanted, you know, now that it's springtime and stuff, make sure you go by there if you haven't. They're just a, a little bit outside the city there. But Lund, we, we stayed for, oh, I had a pint. You had two pints after. Uh, I mean, there's no um, reason yeah. to like count. No. Yeah. 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 Well, we did. No, I'm saying because I was, that was more of a testament to Red Heart that you couldn't have just one. Right. And your alcoholism. But... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, you don't have a job. It's fine. That's <laughs> so what we expect. That's way you. better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> making it sound any better. Man. <laughs> no, but a uh, very cool tap room. I love the feel. Kind of almost like a, a hunting cabin type of thing. But you noticed something that they did too. I'll let you talk about it. That That is pretty cool. Yeah. So uh, right beside the bar there, they had a, a board. I, I can't remember what they called it, but it was... Um, you have the op- option to, to pre-buy a, a beer for somebody else in need um, or or a friend or anyone. So, you can buy a beer and you put a post-it note on their board and, and pin it to the board. Uh, so, me and Teddy, um, on behalf of Ode... O- o- <laughs> I was going to say, oh, beer, but on, <laughs> oh, on behalf of oh, oh, dear, we bought a beer there and said, hey, if you can read this note, you can, you deserve a beer. Sorry, Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> no so, beer for you. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it was like, hey, like very, some people had very specific, they just named the person to try and get that person down there. And it sounds like, hey, if you're, if you're a single parent or if you're, mm-hmm. Uh, had a rough week or like anything really. I thought it was a really clever idea and sometimes it's just nice for <laughs> when you get a free beer, right? So, and if you're if you're a fortunate person, you have the the means to, to buy someone else a beer, it also feels good too. They have a really cool spot there. Like I like mm-hmm. the upstairs and like the big fireplace. It's just a really cool space. Um, I was just talking to someone the other day and, and she said that they actually do their weekly book club or their monthly mm-hmm. book club up at the top because it's oh, a very yeah. like easygoing place. It's social. There's a lot like couches and all that kind of stuff and i was like oh this is a, a yeah. really great idea make sure you follow them on social media they do a lot of fun stuff in there it's just it's just a great vibe all around so i uh, yeah very happy to partner with them and uh, to have this beer i think is is pretty cool and then we don't deserve something this cool we do we yeah, deserve we do. it yeah we do i know i'm just trying to be humble don't ruin it but, but we we deserve it yeah. Yeah. we don't deserve anything yeah we're the most humble people you've ever met we're on TV. It's <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you said in like three hours. <laughs> that's because it's because he's so it's he's so humble. That's <laughs> quality over quantity, though, is what that is. True. Right? I've been talking for like six years tonight. It feels like. But uh, another thing, uh, we definitely tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was just yeah. yeah okay, that's fair. <laughs> I know you only say that because of your alcoholism. So. <laughs> One doesn't have alcoholism. He probably has a lot of isms, but not alcoholism. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Could be good or bad. Anyways, moving on. Another huge thank you. A uh, new business that just opened up here in Red Deer in uh, is it Canyon Square. I think it's called anyways on, on Gates. But uh, Array Patisserie. I'd heard a lot about this. I hadn't been in yet. And uh, kind of a cool story. Dustin went in there a couple weeks ago. And the owner, Jenna, recognized him from the podcast. So she actually... Like, like hadn't lived in Red Deer since 2009, uh, she told me tonight, and then moved back. Was kind of like binging all of the the episodes. So when she saw Dustin, she wanted to send us with some treats. So I was thinking, oh well, I'll get like a croissant or something. She sent. A, I don't even want to know the the how like the net worth of these treats, and it was incredible. It was baked the goods. Price? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking like <laughs> it was a the, the value. The, I've been talking the whole night. The I'm cost? not a word. It yeah. was a very the generous value, yeah. gift. Yes. And it's like a made like there was, yeah, oh croissants, God. Danish, and like great treat. Anyways, everyone else can talk about uh, net value. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> bathtub temperature gauge. Yeah. I didn't know these pastries had some liabilities that yeah. you had to yeah. uh, take into account. Yeah, that one went to college. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were they were absolutely incredible. I can't get enough of croissants and pastries, and my sweet tooth is unrivaled. And everything we tried was incredible. Mm. The uh, the taste was ten out of ten, but the presentation oh my was like twelve out yeah. of ten. Yeah. Like, it like it reminded me of that show. Um, is it cake? Mm. <laughs> Where you're like, yes. this yeah. this piece is like art. This delicatessen oh. mm. is okay. like you almost don't want to eat it because I, I it's think it's so wrong because nice. it's a patisserie. A delicatessen is a deli, but okay. Oh, what? So what? What did it be called? A pelicatessen? No, it's called a patisserie. Oh, <laughs> a pastry shop. Oh, I was trying to sound really smart. <laughs> This piece of food <laughs> <laughs> looked great. Looked great. That's oh. why. That's what I'm trying to yeah. say. It's very, very. Just the presentation was on point. Yeah. Good cheat day, Strybosh. Yeah, it was great. Um, <laughs> it's also McHappy Day. Doesn't doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Whenever this episode comes out. But. Shout out to Mickey D's. <laughs> When I did have a Big Mac today for the kids. So. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, so if you're going to cheat, you may as well cheat, right? That's right. Cheat for some good. Mm-hmm. 
And a really quick story, because I thought this was really cool. Uh, Jenna, well, told Dustin, then told me also that in listening to the podcast, uh, she had kind of heard of one of our other sponsors uh, when we had Bryce Prasunka on from Hung Yuk. And she heard that and thought to contact him. So now she carries his frozen pierogies in her freezer and she he carries some of her uh, take and bake items in his freezer. So I never even thought this. Now we're connecting businesses and stuff too, which is a, I never thought we would be doing that. But I, I just think that's pretty cool. And yeah, thank you, Jenna, everyone at Array so much. Uh, you definitely, definitely want to go check this place place out my goodness that's pretty cool they're like surrogates for each other oh yeah like, i just say like it's a very good collaboration yeah mm-hmm. no they're holding each other's babies like obviously these are mm-hmm. these are jenna's babies and the pierogies are bryce's babies no and one's so saying they just let them keep so, going <laughs> so obviously so they're birthing them in the stores well yeah when they pull them out of the freezer <laughs> and give them to I guess a, an adoption to their agency. New mom or dad. <laughs> that's yeah. a, hey you know what though yeah. then you can say hey where are those hey uh, they're in the c-section yeah <laughs> yeah perfect <laughs> I hated all of that. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, never change. All right. Well, now, uh, Lund, don't don't get uh, comfortable there because it is time to move on to deer call. Mm. That's got to be pretty fucking Your first deer call on TV, Uh, right? It'd be pretty good. Yeah, that one's got to be pretty accurate, I think. Deer Call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause. With $2 from every burger sold going back to the local guest chef's charity of choice. Cilantro and Chive, your favorite new destination to meet with family and friends for food, drink, conversation and fun. It's just that simple. All right. So as always, we put a a question out into the world uh, that you could comment on on our Instagram and Facebook for your chance to win one of two $25 gift cards to Cilantro and Chive. And this time what we asked, uh, and there's, I don't want to give away the reason why I wanted to ask this, but it's just something, at least one thing that you always leave to the last minute. Uh, one of our one of our winners of a gift card, Sam, said, I wish my teacher did this, writing report cards. So my teacher waited to the last minute. She couldn't write so many long comments on what a disturbance I am and distraction and blah, blah, blah. But I don't know. Yeah, we don't have any teachers here, I guess. But uh, that's I, I I don't blame you. Uh, winner number two, uh, David Shannon said this as well. Just said literally any kind of planning, which I'm going to look at you, Lund, for a lot of this and knowing that I'm the same way. But you're, I've never met anyone who waits longer to make a plan for anything than you. No, I don't think that's accurate. I just like to keep my options open. <laughs> Like, what are you doing tonight? Do you want to come to... Oh, I don't know yet. Well, do you have anything else going on? No. Just waiting for a better offer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair. I set myself up for that. Um, yeah, and this is one... This is where the category I fall under. Some people don't. Uh, but Hannah, Alara, and Mistine uh, said everything. And I, I think, honestly, <laughs> like, I'm I'm there for... There's not much I do ahead of time. And I, I'll let you speak for yourself, Lund. Yeah, I would agree with what you said. <laughs> yeah, okay. I didn't want to throw you under the bus. Oh, but. no, no, I do. I, I was just saying you. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, I... Yeah. <laughs> I got all my shit figured out. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Anyway, I disagree with you there, but there is a right some people. I know at this half of the table, probably not, but I mean, pressure makes diamonds, right? And that's how I operate. Like if it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would get done. But does that give any of you three like anxiety just knowing that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm very type A. I want to plan. I want to know things. I want to be thinking about them early. So... Like, are you guys, like, are you talking about, like, I'm going to use, like, a vacation, for example. Okay. Would you like Lund. to, would you like to pre-plan your vacation? Let or me would tell you, you what like- I do. Okay. No. Oh, so, we're going somewhere. Yeah. I research everything. I download maps. I download menus for possible places we could go for dinner. I schedule it all out. However. Nerd alert. Yep. I will say then, once I get on vacation, I'm totally fine with the plan changing. I'm fine with nothing being followed on my schedule, but it means that we never wake up and go, what are we going to do today? Mm -hmm. And spend the whole day trying to figure something out or wasting time. There is a plan. I'm not beholden to it, but you better believe for the two months before I go on a trip, I'm spending months immersed in that. See, and I'm like that too, for as much as I procrastinate, I like having a plan and certain things or at least knowing like some 
some options so because I don't want to miss out on anything. But that actually, Michelle and Chrissy, uh, they said uh, packing is the biggest one. And don't even lend, pretend that you don't pack last minute because I do. And then you pack mm-hmm. after I do. It yeah. actually stresses me out when oh. Ted tells you tells me that you haven't packed for something that I know you're doing. <laughs> I'm stressed out okay. at home about it. I, I feel like when girls pack and when guys pack, it's mm. two different things, though. Like girls, you have so many different mm. outfits, so many different shoes, so many different what We're all pack, just wearing clothes. Way too. Yeah. yeah. I way overpack. If you're a guy and you're going for like a weekend or even a week, you just need two pairs of boxers. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You need boxers, <laughs> socks, uh, shorts, and shirts. And then you're good. And you don't even have to fold your boxers or socks. <laughs> I mean, why would you fold? No, I know, I know. I thought you were going to talk about everything else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fold. And then you, yeah, and then you stuff every. Well, you you fold your shirts. You but don't you stuff fold every, anything. You roll it. Oh well, that's where we're going to disagree again. <laughs> but it's yeah. Like, why would you stress out about packing? I'm going to buy some shirts when I'm down there anyway. Well, so. I don't stress about it. I do it a week early. Well, I don't stress about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I don't do it until the last minute and then oh. I stress about it. And then I'm up all night sorting laundry and then I pack for two weeks for a four night trip because I don't like not having like my whole closet with me. So I wish I was like Lund and like wear the same pair of like sweatpants around Seattle for four days. But I, I was can't. One day. <laughs> And you know what? And if you forget something, it's not the end of the world. No, you have a credit card. That's all you need is a credit card and a passport and you're good. Yeah. I, I mean, I guess if there's a really cute outfit yeah. I want to wear, then yeah, then I'll plan. <laughs> I'll plan to pack that ahead of time. Anyways, there are going to be a lot of debates on these. Uh, Casey said leaving the house. No. And uh, so Carol said the same thing, leaving for an appointment, but she's she's never early, but she's never late. So she leaves exactly when she needs mm. to leave. No, that's no, too stressful. I don't, like, I don't like that. Sounds uh, like efficiency to me. That's one I actually agree with. And usually my problem is I always wait till the last minute to like use the washroom right before I leave mm. the house and, then, and I don't account for it. So then that's what puts me like two minutes late. I feel like living in Red Deer, it's a bit easier because rush hour is like uh, five minutes max <clears throat> yeah. compared to Calgary, Edmonton. Mm. And your like traffic mm-hmm. may actually yeah. throw a wrench in it. So. Show up early, watch some TikToks, eat your car snacks. That's what I do. Yeah. Depends what it's well, for. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Like for me, I leave the I don't leave a second later than I need to for work because it's 5 a.m. <laughs> My boss isn't there to know when I get there, but it takes like no time at all. But also I do the same thing that uh, Jared does. He says, you wait to the last minute to wake up. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's like fair. I wake up. I don't I don't need to shower before work because I just Matt and I in there throw on a hat, whatever. Don't need to do my hair. And then I, I shower after work. But I get up, I grab what I need to get. I eat on the way to work. Boom, five minutes by the time I get up. I'm in the car. I would like to try and arrive like five minutes ahead of time is like my goal. But the only caveat I would say is like if it's like you're going over to a friend's place or going to a party, you never want to be no, on time. You got to be gotta fashionably sh- late. Yeah, you got to show up like 15, yeah. 30 minutes like I think after if that. If someone's time. waiting on you, then you always be a little bit early. It depends. If I know a friend's having a party, I want to show up on time or early so that they don't feel like nobody's showing up to their party. You also show up early because you leave really early. Yeah, and sometimes I run out of car <laughs> snacks, so I need yeah. to go inside. Depends how good the friend is. Mm. Like if it's some loser that you don't like hanging out with. I show up at your house on time all the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whenever, whenever you guys have a dinner. Oh, too shit. So. Yeah, but you've been late a few times. I've never, <laughs> not even with a baby. No, and she always brings <laughs> snacks too. Yeah. yeah. To be, right. to be fair. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, what else? So this is Chantel and Kayleen said the thing that was my inspiration for this because I, I did my taxes early this year on April 29th, <laughs> uh, but they said taxes. And for me, it's like, I, it takes me 90 minutes. It doesn't take long. <laughs> the biggest reason I procrastinate is I know that I'm going to owe because of all mm. like the side jobs I have and stuff. So I just, I just wait until the last minute to do it. Math makes me sad. So I don't do anything about it. You haven't done yours yet. No, I know. <laughs> well, I'll We'll talk. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't like this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I can say this year, I think I had two clients to actually send me stuff on the morning of the 30th, but you know what? I worked hard and I got it done for them that day, but it kind of blows my mind on not like some of the basic taxes. Yes. Like whatever, mm. but there's stuff where it's like, Hey, I got to do like, I'm a sole proprietor and I ran a business and I got to do all my bookkeeping. Like that's too late. 
<laughs> yeah, even if I you're just like you got your t4 thing, slip yeah, or whatever yeah. like that's that's easy but um it's yeah it's the people that like leave their whole shoebox of receipts and they're trying to figure it out on the last day and honestly you're probably just doing yourself a disservice because you're probably missing stuff yeah yeah because you're rushing through it so i i will tell you just to just to make you proud kevin i keep track of my expenses all year long so it is just a matter of plopping in numbers perfect don't say plop enough on this podcast. I'm going to try to sprinkle a few more of those in. Uh, uh, this is this is my favorite one. Uh, Lund's brother, Darren, says, working out for a fitness competition. And you can explain that one, Lundy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, I, for when he first sent it in, I thought he was talking about our fitness competition, mm-hmm. which makes, makes sense. But he was actually referring to... A bodybuilding a competition. A bodybuilding slash fitness competition competition so he last year at our chubbs golf tournament he was the unlucky recipient of a of a mystery prize and that mystery prize is that he had to enter this fitness or bodybuilding contest before next year's tournament and so he did it's on june 1st and i don't think he's started to work out yet so <laughs> or maybe he's just recently started so I think you're at the point where you may as well just go the other way yeah, yeah. yeah. right like and, yeah and, and to be clear like this is the one where it's like the very muscular guys yeah. that like are tanned tan, speedo oiled up and speedo dehydrated yeah and just flexing and darren's like maybe 150 yeah. pounds very athletic great yeah. runner yeah great <laughs> runner say that yeah. like he- yeah but yeah as everyone knows runners aren't really the bodybuilding type and bodybuilders aren't the running type type so um it's what type am i uh, you're I'm neither, neither. You're yeah. neither. Yeah. plop <laughs> somebody <laughs> some <laughs> plop <laughs> You know what? If there's a sound effect to describe me that would be it who's that on oh, just it's plop. Just plop. <laughs> oh perfect oh, good call that i told you we need more plop. yeah there you yeah. go so I forgot what <laughs> if I was finished saying what I was yeah. planning to say, but that's you just plop in whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. So good luck to my brother Darren, June first. Um, I might try and come up for it, or, or but I think it starts at nine a.m. <laughs> Yeah. And and then and, but the finals are at four, so I don't know if one. Are, I don't think he's making the finals. <laughs> so. uh, well, it depends. I've seen like, on the inner people win that because they're the only one. I in know. Their class. So, yeah. So so they they the the different. It's not weight classes. It's height classes. Oh. So he's in the he's five ten, which is like the tallest height class for the bodybuilding. Oh boy! So really? All those guys are like short and stocky type, oh. right? So it's like five ten and up, I guess. He was explaining to me all the uh, everything he's learned oh. so far. Well, I, I laughed saw. because as part of this punishment to join this competition oh, yeah. he had to join like he had to buy a membership for like <laughs> yeah. the alberta yeah. bodybuilding association he spent like 300 dollars yeah. on his membership yeah he's into it for we covered it easy. though we covered yeah. it we didn't make him pay that yeah but uh a couple left um carly said getting someone a gift so i guess that's birthday Ooh. christmas that is one thing actually christmas shopping that i i do quite a bit ahead of time I mean, it's it is easier nowadays with Amazon and and market like anything online because mm-hmm. you're just scrolling yeah. or doing any find something. Like, oh, that'd be well, perfect for so and so. But when you're going out too and like locally, it's just easier to. The sooner you do it, the easier it is, and you mm-hmm. actually get what you need. That's true. But I do find like I, I used to be one of those December twenty third, twenty fourth shoppers, just scrambling for that last second gift. The last few years, I have been much, much better. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of in, in that camp, I guess. I'm. It depends what kind of mental capacity I have. Sometimes I'm really ahead of time on gifts. Sometimes you're lucky to get one. Um, <laughs> Griff's birthday is coming up at the end of May. So if mm. anybody has birthday gift suggestions for a 39-year-old man. We have some firefighter photos left. You show them what a firefighter's body really looks like. I was going to say a bodybuilding membership. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We'll table this and come yeah. back to what it. What do you give to the man that is a gift? Right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Write him a poem. Oh, no. Strybosh and I will write it. Okay. Yeah. He'll like that. Yeah. yeah. What else do we have here? Uh, this one, again, I can't relate, but Taryn said, uh, picking up the kids from grandma and grandpa's house. I mean, I support that 100%. You guys did, Kevin, do you ever get that? Like, oh, sorry, this came up or that came up and you're just eating chips off your stomach. Yeah, it's, it, well, oh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's, yeah, when they like get to go for the sleepover and you wake up and there's no kids and it's like, let's just watch TV and not, not be responsible yeah. for any other human being. It's, yeah, you do kind of like, can they stay for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> How about supper? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and if only Aaron can attest to this, but I think this goes with uh, any the, like Brianna said, putting on a bra. I think that depends on your specific setup. <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I think for me, like I yeah. don't get dressed until I like have to leave the house or whatever. Right. Like it's kind of the, kind of the same thing. I'm sure it's a lot more yeah. uncomfortable, but. Yeah. I mean, it depends on, on your bras, on your mm. boobs. So. A lot of factors. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah. I respect it. I respect yeah, it. But. So is, is she basically saying like no bra at home and then she throws one on like right before she goes out the door. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't find yeah. them comfortable. So mm. she puts it off as long as she can. Yeah. I think that's fair. Like even yeah. for guys, you're just wearing sweats at home and then yeah. you mm-hmm. put the real pants on and the big throw, boy the, pants, throw yeah. the other jersey on when you head out the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much the same thing. Okay. That was it. That was it for, for the list here. Now I want to know, especially Lon, Lon, you and I probably have like a whole bunch of, you, you all must have at least one specific one that is always last minute. I know I, I got a million. But. Calling. If I have to call mm. for something mm. i will not do i i have had an alarm go every thursday to get my trailer serviced for two months now i finally called i was on the phone for two minutes oh. i have an appointment i hate i only know places are you right where like that you could do online booking yeah. or i don't agree with that it's pretty easy just to talk with somebody though i don't know why i just don't like it yeah it's there, my brain thing. says if you have to call put it off <laughs> i'll plan your vacations you make my appointments no 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 no, no. i never said i <laughs> no, I like coming up with a list and then if I get some things done on the list, then it's a good vacation. Okay, but there's got to be some kind of trade-off though that Erin can do something for you and you make her phone call, you schedule her appointments. That could be your new job. Erin's pers- <laughs> personal My assistant. PA. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I'll, I'll call for you. Good. I need a house cleaner, but I'm too scared to start oh, looking no, into it. No, I don't house. want you to clean. No, you I didn't. You clean my house. No. You can clean my no. house. <laughs> you clean my, you clean my no. house. I'll make your phone calls. You just, no, you, you just Deal. have to call. Uh, some- Deal. Do not take that trade. <laughs> you just have to call someone for me and set it up. Yeah. Just find me a house cleaner. Oh. It's not us. We're not cleaning. One. They're done. Yeah. You found one. Call her and say, go to Aaron's house. Oh, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Kevin, <laughs> what a, what a Kevin's? meaningless conversation. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry if that all stayed in. Oh, my God. <laughs> I agree with Aaron's take. I hate calling people. It's uh, the worst. And <laughs> you're talking right now. You're doing a great job of it. It's not What's, on a phone it's a, to a human that I don't know. Yeah, and they don't talking, know me. You're talking on TV in front of people yeah, that you don't know. I can't friends. see them. You, you They're not talking back You to can't me. see the people on the phone either. And they came to us. I have to go to them yeah. if I'm calling. That's They're true. wanting you to call. They no, work They work at that place. It's different no. having a real conversation where you can't have eye contact. It's it's different. No. Every time the phone rang at our common place of business, mm. I said, no, thank you. Or you said, Aaron speaking. <laughs> I have a great You're phone voice. Your ad reading voice. But. So pleased. <laughs> fuck phone calls. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm sorry I brought it up again. Um, I well, kind of you. Yeah. How do you feel? Before? No, don't. Yeah, we're, I kind of shared mine already. Yeah. Is like leaving the house and using the washroom till the last minute was kind of my. Yeah. I think a lot about if I can pee or potentially other things at the place that I'm going to, yeah. mm-hmm. and it stresses me out probably more than it should. <laughs> but stuff's happened in the past, and therefore yeah. you know you, you get scars. Sometimes you should have gone more than just pee before you went out for a run. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you only poop at home? <laughs> no, that, that's not a problem at all. It's pooping <laughs> yeah. in places that don't have toilets. Oh yeah, that would be. I yeah. can see where that is. Always that run with some napkins yeah. in your pocket. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, Walsh, can you follow that up? Yeah. Uh, there's, pro- I'm sure there's some things, and my wife would probably say, but I can't. I honestly can't really think. But one I would say would probably just be doing my laundry because mm. I do. Oh, I yeah. do my own laundry. Uh, like it's not like Kim does it for me or anything. I thank you. I wasn't looking for that. <laughs> um, but it's like. It's basically like, oh shit, I'm putting on my last pair of boxers. Yeah. Like now I got to do my laundry. It's, I'm not pre-planning that. Oh, yeah. I'm really good at doing half my laundry and then just letting it like sit there. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm good at cleaning it, but the taking putting it away. out and folding it and putting it away, that's, that's yeah. my struggle. Oh, I don't fold it and put it. I have a lunch seat. I buy piles of laundry are ridiculous. I'm very good at like every, maybe twice a week. I like to all like always have op- like options for clothes and stuff, but it, putting it away just doesn't happen. Yeah, it's different when you have a bunch of other people in your house yeah. that also need the mm. 
like the babies. Amount of, yeah, well, the we amount of laundry. There are so many we do. clothes yeah. in a day, and then I do too because they're covered in baby. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a, yeah. My my other one. I made a joke on Instagram about like doing planning for this podcast. I literally do last minute, and then days like today when the printer doesn't work, I have to uh, very <laughs> panically text Kevin and Aaron to, for someone to print it. But hey, we got it. So I won. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, as always, to everyone who always contributes. And like I said, uh, keep an eye out every month for the Deer Call on Instagram and Facebook for your chance to win a uh, couple of gift cards. So with that, we're going to move on to uh, the way we end every episode with a bit of a game. Uh, and actually, we planned this ahead of, we actually talked, well, not that much ahead of time, but we do always wait to the last minute to figure out what's on the line. This time, uh, we're going to do this game, the to- the bottom two people, and in this game, the people with the, the two worst times or two worst scores are going to have to caddy for nine holes for the two winners uh, and a round of golf. So uh, not it's still a fun, fun thing, but it's more fun to golf than caddy. So uh, Aaron, uh, I guess, uh, take us through this game. All right, we're just going straight mad gabs. I've seen a lot of TikToks of people trying to do it lately, and they make me laugh. Uh, full disclosure, none of us actually owned mad gabs anymore, so I've just found some sort of online version of it, and uh, we're just going to let it happen. Nice yes, way to disclose that. I would hate for the mad gabs people to come <laughs> after us. Yes. Yeah. You don't want. <laughs> yeah. You don't oh, want uh, big big board games. No. So after. we got to come up with a, a different name for this. Oh. Gad maps. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Gad Maps. Gad Maps. Gad Maps. Got it. Done. Um, so we're guys just gonna go one at a time. Everyone's like, gonna have a minute to get as many as they can. Uh, is, I don't know if you've played this game before, but it's basically it's a bunch of nonsense words, right? And you have to try and sound out oh, what the yes. actual sentence yes. is. Okay. So you say it out loud and then you work through it. Yeah, and it's however many you get in a minute. Uh, are we allowing passing? Yeah, one pass. One pass. One pass. We'll say. Okay. And yeah, however many in a minute. And if it's, I don't know, if it's a tie, I guess we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah. But well, how about mad? Gad mad. Gad mad. Yes. Gad mad. Gad. Gad mad. Mad. Was it called something different? Man, this is gonna be difficult. <laughs> You're gonna suck at this game, <laughs> or you'll be the best. I don't know. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go second. <laughs> I'll go first. Okay. Yeah, I'll take you, the heat. You, under, you, you yep. get the game, yeah. Yep. Okay. So Walsh has volunteered to go first. I'm going to put a, a minute on the clock. Uh, Aaron's going to run you through it and uh, just tell us when you're ready. I'm ready. AP Streety. AP Streety. Close. A pastry? Nope. <laughs> Apostrophe? No. no don't AP don't Streety. Go back, to base, go back to basics. Ape. He. Streety. No, don't, hey, don't, don't say anything. AP Streety. You got your you one, got pass. one pass? E- Uh-oh. I don't know. Pass. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wide hunt shoe call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Wide hunt shoe call. <laughs> 20 seconds. I have no This one's topical. Clue. Wide hunt shoe call. <laughs> Why didn't you call? Close enough. Close enough. enough. Why don't you call? Poise Gout Sofa Mary Car. <laughs> oh my god. All right, so we got to take on one. That one is tough. I don't know if I'm going to do it. Boy Scouts of America. The first one was a peace treaty. Like you said it. Oh, I don't know if I already got that actually. I don't know if I already got that either. That was hard. Yeah, I thought, oh, you said apostrophe. I thought, oh, that's it. Well, a pastry. I was like, oh, why don't you call? And it's because I I saw the the, the answer for why don't you call. I was like, oh, what a, what a (laughs) talk. The one person. Why don't you call? So you're going second? Yes. Okay. So one. One for one. Yeah. I feel like there might be. A I'm on the board, here. baby. Yeah. yeah, that's it's a tough mountain to climb. Well, you want to do more than one, but I'm ready. Comet he affair hearse. Comet he affair hearse. Comet he affair hearse. Comet he affair <laughs> hearse. Pass. May cuss suck just chin. <laughs> Suggestion. May I make cuss. May make, <laughs> make a suggestion. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Phase them, Hughes sick. Phase them, Hughes sick. Phase them, Hughes sick. Phase them, Hughes sick. Face the music. Yes. Hoop, hoop side hit ditto Ken. Hoop side hit ditto Ken. Hoop side hit. Hoop side hit ditto Ken. Hoop side ditto. Hoop side hit ditto Ken. Hoopside head did okay. Hoopside head did okay. Hoopside head did okay. Hoopside did okay. Hoops. 
Whose side are you? Oh. Oops, I did it again. Oh. Yep, you got that one, yeah. <laughs> Oh. I think it's almost easier hearing them that's than why, it is reading that was, them. Did okay. Oh my god! <laughs> that's why I was saying oh, it. That's, that's what that was my strategy to say it out loud. Oh my god! Because <laughs> when you were saying it, the more you said it, the closer I could I see got. that this is you last minute packing, just like <laughs> oh, 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 oops, who's that? Oh. That's why talking on the phone sucks. Oh my god! I, I want to do like five. Uh, I should have hey, got that one. New, got new leader two, though. Two. two. Good luck. Who's going? <laughs> I'll go next. Kate. Oh, fuck. You got to turn it a, a bit more for yeah. Yeah. All right. You ready? Nope. <laughs> Lair fink gout lout. Lair fink gout lout. Lair well, that's, tr- that's tricky. Lair fink gout lout. Pass. I, I think know. I know what that I one was. Dawn ways might I'm. Dawn ways might I'm. Don weighs my time. Don weighs my time. Maybe if I say it faster, it'll make sense. Don weighs my time. Don weighs my time. Don weighs my time. Uh, what are you saying? Don. Just say it fast. Don weighs my time. Don weighs my time. Don weighs my time. He's, he's already wasted his pat. You can't. I thought you said just say it fast. Yeah. Don weighs my dime. You are pretty much saying it. Yeah. Don weighs my dime. (laughs) (laughs) Say it loud. Say it louder. Don weighs my (laughs) All right, I'm caddy. Don't Don't waste my time. time. (laughs) Was the first one laughing out loud? Yeah. That was hard. Oh, I would not have got the first one. Okay. So 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 far the three of us, everyone's passed on the first one. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay. Go. Heiny duck holes, how where? Heiny duck holes, how where? Heiny duck, heiny duck holes, how where? Heiny duck holes, how where? Heiny duck holes, heiny duck holes, heiny duck. Heine, <laughs> okay, pass. I don't, that one's tough. Oh, that the first ones are tricky. Right? I saw that one. Yeah. Pitcher's heat bell town. Pitcher's heat bell town. Put your seatbelt on. Yeah. Wow. That's, that one is good. <laughs> My ham mead hole fins. My ham heed whole fins. Miami Dolphins. Yeah. Hello, wind dressed mortgage. Hello, wind dressed mortgage. Mortgage. Hell. Hello, wind. Hello, wind. Hello, wind dressed mortgage. Hello. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Five seconds. A low interest mortgage. Yeah. Well, two. Well, okay. Because it's hard to skip All through. Right. Right. I guess the Kevins yeah. are caddying. Yeah, nice. I guess so. That was a nice. Nice quick game. This is unsanctioned. Um, Gat. Gat yeah. G- yeah. So. I think we should do, though, like, let's do at some point, if we can film some extra content, I think we should do, like, a more full yeah. version of that. Because that was fun. But, yeah, for podcast purposes, uh, Lund, looks like uh, we got a couple of caddies. Maybe when we do our, our golf bet that we'll, okay. we'll talk about on another episode. All right. Kevin's counting for me. Okay. <laughs> then I get Kevin. Yeah. Yeah, we got you. Yeah, nice. All right. Well, then that just about does it for this episode. So as always, uh, let's wrap things up with any everyone's final thoughts. That game was extremely hard. Um, I kind of figured it would. That's why I volunteered to go first. And it's much easier when you don't look at the words and you just hear mm-hmm. other people yes, say it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that you got to close your eye. Once you have yeah. it a little bit memorized, you have to close your eyes. Yeah. But otherwise, I had a great time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the beers and the uh, pastries that we mm-hmm. got. And this has been um, a delicious episode. Just plop the word delicious right in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that game uh, ruined my night. <laughs> 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 There's so much sincerity. Yeah. I believed him too. Yeah. Ruined a perfectly good cheat day. <laughs> and... Uh, but hey, I got to sit at the table again. Mm-hmm. I got to drink beer that has our logo on it. And I got to have a delicious blueberry Danish. Not too bad other than words should be said like how they're supposed to be said. Fair. Yeah. I, yeah. Nad who a dime. <laughs> <laughs> you had a good time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Bonus round, bonus <laughs> round. How long were you thinking of that? Like the whole time you guys are talking. <laughs> the whole time you guys are talking, yeah. I love that yours was, oops, I did it again. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I had no idea. I wasn't even close. I wasn't even close to that. Don't waste my time. Uh-huh. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> was that it? That's it. That's all. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, that's it. That's all. Thank you so much again <laughs> to our episode 38 sponsor, Red Stag Barbershop, and to Clayton for joining us uh, for a, a very interesting, uh, maybe heavily edited interview, but uh, was a great time as always. Thank you to our presenting sponsor, Bose Bar and Stage, and of course to Riley for having us once again at Communal Creative Studios. Of course, last but not least, thank you to you for tuning in once again and to anyone who tuned into us for the very first time on Rogers TV. Uh, and if you made it this long, oh, God bless you. For Ryan Lund, Kevin Walsh, the athlete Kevin Strybosch, and co worker Aaron, I'm Ted Emmett, and we'll see you. Ne- <laughs> That's a $5 fine. And we'll see you next time. Smart now.